Jesus Church. Thank you for joining us for another amazing service. Hello, Hello Jesus, Jesus Church. Church. Man, how's everybody doing? Welcome yet again to another Sunday service. Oh, I man. am with oh, a good man. friend of mine, Mr. Kumo Sipeng. Oh was... man, I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. How was your week? The week was brilliant. The week was nice. Powerful, I mean, eh? I mean we're here looking beautiful. You can see. I'm sure it was. <laughs> after, after blessing us with that powerful message that you gave us last week, I'm sure. Oh, last week's the week message. was amazing. But speaking about last week's message, if you missed it, guys, this brother preached a powerful word. But before he says anything about it, check this out. We'll see you after this. Bam. We want to go forward, but we are being held back because, because of our past. And I'm encouraging you now to accept your past ban. So what is happening is that in our past, in our things that, that were happening, is that all these conditions, all these conditions that we grew with, it, it, it's high time we accept them to say that we grew up with the wheat. But that does not mean that we die. We grew up with something that was meant to destroy us because now what the weed does is that it covers your, your light, it tries to cover your light, it, it, it eats where you are eating. So, so when, when you grow with the weed, it, 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 it's a challenging factor for you. But I like what he says, he says, let both grow together. I'm encouraging you with this way to say that whatever happened to you in the past, it, it, is meant, it was meant to grow you. Whatever happened to you in the past, it was meant so that you can know the struggles of growing with something that is not supposed to be next to you. It, 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 it is something that you have to go with you go with and accepting your past means that you have learned that this is the position where God allowed me to grow in and then what I'm encouraging you with accepting your past now is to say that you are not your past God saved you you have accepted him as your Lord and Savior accept your past but you are now a wheat you are now a wheat without wheat the weed has been took out and what I like the most is that they took out the weed first. They took out the weed and bundled it. It, it, it has been tied and, and, and thrown into the barn. It, 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 that thing has been bent. That thing is gone. Accept your past. In fact, be bold about it. That, like, just say that like, when you say a story of your past, let it not be a sad story. Let it be a triumphant story to say that, you know what, it, this is a testimony for me. I've went through this. I grew with the weed, but now, but right now, but right now, I am standing still and I am of God. Oh my gosh, what a powerful message by this brother right here. Man, what was in your mind when you gave us a message? Oh man, oh, like, like the, yeah. the whole story, I think that what I can touch on is, yes, yes. is what you understand that the yeah, wheat, yeah. the wheat needs to grow with the weed. Yes, sir. And then the Come weed on. is the only one that taken out and binded yes, and put into yes, the fire yes. but the wheat stays strong yes, and sir, it yes, feeds sir. the people that's sure. what the wheat does yes. so i mean like it was just a powerful message that i would Man. take for a lifetime as well sure except your past guys powerful message go check it out last week's sermon but today yes. we are back with a brand new insert man elise is gonna bless us with the word he's got a word that's just on fire for you so we cannot wait to see you after this but before we go if they're not following us mr kuma where can they get us i mean we are on instagram we are on facebook we are on youtube as you are watching us right now we are on tiktok as yes, well sir. guys let's let's do this go yes, like subscribe yes. Let's do this. That's right, guys. And if you want to come join us for the physical service, the address is right there on screen. Or just contact um, our contact number. A man, a guy with a very deep voice, deeper than mine, <laughs> will be on the other line <laughs> of that voice. Very good friend of mine. Rebs will connect with you and tell you what to do. But we will see you after this powerful message. God bless you. Peace. Peace. Hello, friends. Welcome to Jesus Church. My name is Menelisi Pele and I am your friend. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. As you know, we are all about knowing Jesus and making friends. Our vision is very simple. We want to make Jesus famous. We want people to have 
a meaningful relationship with him. And now the way of us to do that is by making friends, making disciples, the Great Commission. And it stays at the very core of everything that we do. We're intentional about building relationships, uh, about meeting new people, about just walking across the room and really just shifting people's life and telling them about Jesus. So I'm super excited to be a part of such a move and such a revolution, such a revival in these last days that we are living in. It's really, really hard times out there. I think we've come through COVID, we've come through uh, riots, um, we've come through low shedding. I mean, we've all been experiencing some degree of pain and frustration over some of the things that are happening in our country, political instability. We are currently going through some, what is a multi-government uh, <clears throat> um, parties running and all of those things and trying to get municipalities and get things right. So many problems. I still believe that the local church is the answer to a dying world. And we need to believe that as a church, that Jesus is the answer. It's not gonna come from anywhere, it's gonna come from us. And that's why Jesus Church is here, guys. You must always remember, we started this church with a mission and with a vision to make friends and for people to know Jesus, because we believe that Jesus Christ is the answer. So this is the time to stand up and be the light in the darkness, to really be the difference wherever we are in your community, in your workplace, in your school, wherever you are, if there's ever an opportunity to shine, it's when it's the darkest. And right now it's very dark and that's our opportunity as the church of Jesus to shine. Well, I've been a bit out. Uh, you can hear some of my voices still coming back. I've had a bit of a flu for the past two weeks and it's been rough. There's been a bug going around. Some of you guys may have also have gotten some kind of a flu, but uh, some kind of a flu, but by God's grace, I'm here, I'm back, I'm up. So please bear with me as I share the word of God with you guys. In fact, today I actually just want to speak from my heart and just pour some of the things that God has been speaking to me even while I was praying and just seeking his face and direction and vision for my life, for my family and for our church. And um, <clears throat> Raps had a, a brilliant, brilliant uh, vision for this month and a theme for this month about pressing forward or focus on pressing forward. And we were so privileged last week to have Kumo really just open that up while I was out and sick and he just stepped up and really pushed a beautiful message, a wonderful teaching um, with some three key principles, which I really believe that uh, if we all listened and took notes, it's really going to help us going forward and towards the end of this year as a church and as we are about to prepare for 2023, because it's going to be a great year for us as a church in 2023. So I hope you guys um, heard the message last week. If you haven't, I want you to go back. Uh, we have all our messages available on YouTube. Go back and listen to it. This focus theme is very powerful and very crucial and focusing and pressing forward um, is what we need right now because we're hitting that time of the year where fatigue kicks in, uh, where you're gonna start hearing messages about finishing strong and all of that because it's real. You get really tired towards the end of the year. It's psychological, it's emotional drainage. You've been having all these dreams and these visions and these um, <clears throat> New Year's resolutions and some of them have not come to fruition. And the temptation is always to get discouraged. And I can tell you right now, even for us as a church, we we record every week the pieces editing this so much of work you can get tired you know the, the Pretoria campus uh, they work very hard to, to to reach people to save people and the temptation is to get tired the temptation is to give up uh, but the Holy Spirit I think is speaking through us through this message which um, our campus leader in 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 in, in Pretoria picked for us raps which I think is very powerful to press for just to remind us that in tough times like this is when we actually need to press forward you know you, you 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 don't have to you don't have to think that struggles are not there you don't have to pretend like you don't feel tired acknowledge it but press forward and um obviously this comes from the book of philippians chapter number three and i'm going to read this this is paul's uh story and i'm just going to share from my heart what um god is saying and um my, my theme today, or my topic, if you probably saw our poster, it's very simple. It's compelling focus, compelling focus. And it's this question, very simple question. And then we're gonna pray. Do you have a compelling focus? That word compel means something that forces you, something that pushes you, something that 
is so powerful that it will not allow you to rest. It's compelling. If somebody, if if somebody says it's, it's, it's they, it's some, it's something is compelling them, it means they can't help but do that thing. It's compelling. It's compelling for me to wake up. Maybe I'm hearing so much noise. Somebody's waking me up, saying, "Wake up!" They compelling me. They forcing me to wake up. Even if I try to sleep, they shaking me up so much I won't be able to sleep. There's a compelling wake awakening. There's a compelling voice that I want to quit. I want, but there's something compelling me that even if I want to quit, I will not quit. Um, uh, Paul says the love of Christ constrains us in the in the NIV and in the in the King James says it compels us that we know that if one man died for all thus all have died which means it compels it forces us into death so that even if we wanted to continue sinning we can no longer sin because we are dead to sin right that's why in Romans it says how can we who are dead in sin live any longer therein why because the love of christ compels us it forces us to live righteousness it forces us it forces us to live in a way that honors god there's a power in compulsion where something takes control of you where something takes charge of you and my question to you today do you have a compelling focus a compelling focus means a focus that will not allow you to get distracted because there are so many things right now that are happening and that have happened in the year that are distractions and if you don't have a compelling focus you will be distracted when peter was called by jesus to walk on the water jesus was supposed to be his compelling focus but because it wasn't compelling for him he took out his eyes and began to look on the waves there was nothing forcing him to keep his eyes on jesus he was focusing on the water and i want to say to you today you've got to have a compelling focus you've got to have something that forces you to look onto it to look onto jesus you gotta have a reason to wake up in the morning and continue to pray. You gotta have a reason to continue going to work. You gotta have a reason to love your neighbor even when they don't love you back. You need a compelling focus so that even when the going gets rough, going gets tough, and you can see that your prayers, uh, you've been praying and praying, and it feels like they're not being answered. It is a compelling focus that will push you to continue praying. Do you have a compelling focus do you have a reason do you have a reason tonight to pray do you have a reason if you don't have a reason you will give up when the going gets tough what's your reason for being in jesus church what's your reason for being a christian what's your reason for praying what's the reason for you reading your bible if you don't have a compelling focus you will set commitments and you will not see them through you will set a timer to wake up at 12 and when it's time for you to wake up you're gonna continue sleeping why you do not have a compelling focus you need something that's gonna force you up of bread saying you know what i would like to continue sleeping but i can't continue sleeping because i need jesus i want to know him i want to tell you a story right now in my life in the era that i'm in my compelling focus is to know Jesus more than I've ever known him in my life. That's the one thing that keeps me going. I want to know Jesus more than I've ever known him in my life. And that's why I pray. That's why I read the Bible. That's why I preach. I do everything that I can to know Jesus more. So even when I feel tired and weary, I have to wake up and pray because I've got a compelling focus. Wait a minute. I haven't even read the verse to you guys. Let's read it quickly. Verse number, let's start from verse number 11. It says, verse number 10. And I continually um, long to know the wonders of Jesus more fully. I continue to long to know the wonders of Jesus more fully, Paul says, and to experience the overflowing power of his resurrection working in me. He says, I will be one with him in his suffering and I'll be one with him in his death. Only then 
will I be able to experience the complete oneness with him in his resurrection from death? I admit that I have not yet acquired the absolute fullness that I am pursuing. I admit I have not yet acquired the absolute fullness of what I'm pursuing. I admit to my church, I'm not there yet. I haven't reached my purpose. I'm not the person that God has called me to be. I admit, and I need people who are going to admit today that they're not where they're supposed to be. They're not where they know they should be. But I run, he says, with passion into his abundance. He says, I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance, which means that overwhelming richness of who he is there is so much of jesus to be known that i have to run to it and be captured in his abundance i am pursuing his abundance if there's one thing that's moving my heart right now church is to know him there is so much to know of jesus that if we take quadrillion years getting to know him who still would have only scratched the surface i want to know him more than i've ever known him in my life he says but i run with passion into his abundance so that i may reach the purpose that jesus christ has called me this is my passion church to fulfill what he wants me to discover if i could just unload my heart onto you tonight i wish i could this is my compelling reason church it's my compelling reason to run into his abundance, to know him more than I've ever known him in my life. To pray more, to read the Bible more, to discover facets of his glory that I've never seen. Manifold wisdom of God, mysteries that have never been heard of. Paul says, I know a man, whether in spirit or in flesh, I do not know. But he was taken up to the third heaven and he saw things that were not worthy to be uttered. Jesus says, there's so many things I'd like to share with you, but you cannot bear them. But when he comes, the Holy Spirit, he shall show you all things. There are so many things to be known in God. There is so much abundance. There is so much of glory. What is your compelling reason tonight? Is it, is it money? Is it fame? Is it riches? Is it prosperity? Or is there a compelling reason for when the going gets tough for you to continue pursuing and seeking him? Him and praying and pressing forward even when the going gets tough. I can tell you right now, if your focus is to be successful or to get a promotion or to get money, that is not a compelling reason because when the going gets tough, that will not be able to keep you. But if you have a compelling reason, a compelling focus, you will push through. He says, I don't, I don't depend, verse 13, on my own strength to accomplish this church. As Jesus Church, before I pray, we don't depend on our own strength to accomplish this mission. We know it's hard. We know it's not easy, but we do not lean on our own understanding or on our own strength to accomplish this. We lean on him. We lean on the compelling reason. He says, ah, however, Paul says, I do have one compelling focus. Ooh. He says, I do have one compelling focus. What is your compelling focus tonight? I do not depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I want to tell you tonight, all you need is one compelling focus. Just one. You don't have to ask or look for many things before we finish this year i want you to reshape your lenses and just find one compelling focus to keep you going and to stop you from giving up to stop you from giving up you need one compelling focus i forget all of the past as i fasten my heart to the future instead i run straight to the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory price 
through the anointing of Jesus Christ. So let all who are fully mature have this passion. And if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires, God will reveal it to them. And let us all advance together to reach this price. Let's press forward, following one path with one passion, my beloved friends. Intimate, in, sorry, imitate my walk with God and follow all those who walk according to the way of life we have molded before you. And then he goes on to tell them and how to walk in these different standards of knowing Jesus. The reason why I'm, my voice is breaking is because this has been so close to my heart and the Holy Spirit has just been calling us to a place of prayer as a church. And every time I just think about Jesus, it just gets sweeter every day. And I just wanted to lean in to you today, tonight, before we pray and say, I know what my compelling focus is. I want to know God more than I've ever known him in my life. I want to pray more than anyone prays in this place. I want to I wanna fast more than any, anyone. I want to out pray, out give, out love, out know anyone more. You know, I just want to know God. In fact, I once prayed a very ridiculous prayer. I'll tell you. I told the Father, Father, I want to know you more than your son Jesus knows you. I want to be so intimately in love with him and in this place know him more than anything. Because the more you know him, the more you long for him. Blessed are those who thirst and hunger after righteousness, for they shall be filled. What is your compelling focus? I can tell you right now before this year finishes, my one focus is to know Jesus. That's why this is our vision. That's why this is important to us as a church is for people to know Jesus. Church, if we don't get anything right, if we don't get the sound right, if we don't get the, uh, the, the music right, if we don't get the, the, uh, the deco and whatever, any, everything right or creative stuff, if we don't get anything right, there's one thing that we need to get right as a church because this is our, our vision. We need to know Jesus. That's my compelling focus. I hope you're very clear of what's your compelling focus because I'm telling you now, the people that are going to make it successfully under this uh, of, uh, to the end of this year are the people with a compelling focus. The people that are not going to get distracted are the people with a compelling focus. So I want to pray with you right now. Lord Jesus, pray for each and every person that's watching online, wherever they are. Lord, as they come to you, you know what their compelling focus is. You know what their, focus, their compelling reason is. I pray, Lord God, right now that you revive that. Revive that fire. Take them back to that first love, to that place where it forces them to not sleep, where it forces them to move forward and to press towards you, even in the difficult times, even when they want to give up. That compelling focus, that one thing, I pray, Lord God, right now it may be revived in their hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, all we needed today was one person to make a decision. And I do believe that there is a person out there that's watching today that heard my cry and that heard the Holy Spirit speak and made a decision to make, to get one thing, one focus and said, you know what? I'm going to continue. I'm going to push forward. I'm going to have one compelling focus so that when the going gets tough, I will not give up. So thank you so much for joining us. And remember, it's all about knowing Jesus. This is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, open up your hearts right now. We are going to go into a time of offering, but thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you, you continue just practicing this word even as the week goes by. God bless you. I love you so much and see you guys next week. Wow, oh, wow, man. wow, what wow, a word, wow, guys. Wow. Yo, man, at least he came back with some fire. I know we haven't seen it for a while, Oof. but he came back and he preached Flames. a powerful 
message as he said he wasn't feeling well a couple of weeks yep. but man don't, with that being said don't ever underestimate the power of prayer we stood together we prayed together and our leader is back and he just blessed us with a powerful message compelling focus oh man was his oh word. man that was that sir it was wonderful and and like uh, with that with that prayer i just want to mm. invite people to say every friday yes. every friday at seven yes. we are here praying yes. if yes. you don't know about it now you know about yes. it just hit up on our fa- uh, whatsapp yes whatsapp yes um we'll share the link with you it happens on google meet a more intimate space so you can join us you can send your prayer request yep. and we can pray with you so yeah guys but we are about now to go jump into the word of offering my friend mr kumo here is a very powerful scripture that he's going to share with us today um what is the scripture that yes, you have sir. Us, sir? yes sir um i, I have Col- colossians 3 mm. from verse 17 and it reads as follows yep and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, mm. giving thanks to God and the Father through him. Sure. And what I can get from this scripture, yeah. and I, I feel like it's everyone who gets this from the scripture, mm. is that when you give, give it, give anything, whether it's a phone, whether, whether it's your clothes, whether yeah. it's yeah. to the church with your finances, give it as if you are giving it to god so you give your best to god you give expecting something from god we don't just give to saying oh we are giving to jesus church now they owe me now they must take me seriously no we give to god Sure. What do you think yeah. about this one? No, that's good, man. That's good. For me, it brings up a very impo- important principle. You said that we give to God, not pri- pri- primarily to the church. Nope. So if you give, knowing that you are giving to God, then your expectation shall be on God. Focus there. And not the church. You know, he even says, test me in this. Yep. And see if I will not open up the, what, the floodgates of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. Mm-hmm. So a very powerful message, guys. And as you can see, God is doing tremendous Wonderful. work here at the church. We just actually purchased some lights, so we may be looking a bit better today. <laughs> yes. But it's all because of you guys. And now we're on the verge of buying some speakers so we can just bring back that atmosphere of worship again. So exciting times are happening. My Lisa did mention that next year we've got some exciting things happening. Yes. But sadly, we have come to the end of the service. Oh yeah, the banking details are on screen. We have come to the end of the service. Me and my friend uh, Kumo here are about to leave you and say bye. So God bless you guys. We love you. We will see you next week. Next week. Peace out.